Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Zach Congonis. We are here to bring you the best solutions to your lifting problems. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable, and entertaining way. Good morning. It's afternoon. Do, do you have anything to go through? What are you, what are you hitting us with? What's been happening in the life of Not a bunch. We're going to, going to Tarelgan tomorrow. Middle of butt fuck nowhere. Look at uh, a wedding venue, which is yeah, nice. They, all the wedding venues in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's, it's nice. It'll be like, cows you could and do shit. It middle of Sydney or whatever. If you want. Like, if oh, fuck thing. that off. There's nothing that I could think. On the Central Coast. Worse. You could go back to go back to Gosford. Oof. Go back to go back to Shit Lake. Have a <laughs> have a wedding in um, what's it called Long Jetty. There's this big lake. <laughs> <laughs> it just yeah. smells like shit. <laughs> We call, it poop, we call it Poopy Lake. Um, but yeah, there's yep. cows. I said to Dakota, there's one thing that mm. I need, and it's a picture next to a rolling green hill with cows in the background. Anything else could not give a single fuck. That's all I want. One right. picture What's of cows. That, is that your, why is that your, your thing? Oh, I just think cows. Cows or horses. I just fucking, I just really like horses. I like big dogs mm. that go nay. <laughs> I don't know if that's what. They're like big dogs. Have you ever, have like you ever just... pet a horse? Have you yeah, ever pet yeah, a horse? yeah, yeah. How nice is yeah. it? Yeah. Well, that's just yeah, nice. I mean, they're great, but I don't. I, I don't think they like come down and like lie down with you, and they're not. I don't think it's Sometimes the same. They do. Depends how well the horse knows you. It's like if True. you go to Costco. I mean, I'm not a farmer. I don't know. Lady's not going to lay down with you. Maybe you, because yeah. you're all jacked and stuff. But that's right. Mickey, <laughs> what? Anyway, what? what are we talking about today? I don't know. <laughs> Jeez, <where are> we? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I, just well, I am, uh, force myself upon animals. That's how they love me. Yeah, we are. Mickey, that's I don't give them an option. I don't give that them an option. Somebody no. called the RSPCA. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> God. I've already had the RSPCA Jesus. called on us before. Strong though. tangents already. Yeah. We we are, yeah, don't, don't, don't go, we did have the RSPCA called on us because they, they didn't think we were feeding Arkin because Arkin was like a skinnier dog. And then this lady next that. door, she was super like drunk all the time and then she thought, oh, <laughs> they mustn't be feeding their dog for some reason. Even. She used to throw meat over the fence and feed the dogs. And then complain that they were shitting a lot. And then yeah, and then complain they were shitting a him. lot. And I'm like, well, because you feed them. Yeah. And then she said, oh, you also, they're underfed. I'm like, well, if they're shitting a lot, clearly they're not underfed because if yeah. they're underfed, they wouldn't shit. Well, Arky boy was just skinny. And Arkin's a, Arkin was a husky Kelpie. So he had the Kelpie structure, not the husky structure. So yeah. he was a, just a leaner boy. And Arky's like, shut the fuck up, mum. This lady's throwing me chicken wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, loving that's it. the problem. <laughs> she know. was throwing over cooked chicken bones. And I'm like, I actually <laughs> confronted her once. And went you offered confronted her. her. Yeah, you I confronted, confronted her. her. I had to stop making from bashing them. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> she's like, you don't feed your animals? And I was like, if you know anything about feeding dogs, like it is like two most common bones. things. Do Just not give them cooked right chicken now. bones. Mickey's, oh my God, I'm fuming this right is gonna now. Be, this is going to be half an hour. Yeah, tangent. okay, I'll stop there. Don't give them chocolate either, people. Or grapes, or yeah. No, unless they ask. Should I just start listing off things not to feed your animal? No, no, no. People okay. can work it out. Actually, I can. I can actually uh, take this tangent somewhere else. To be honest, the uh, let's the go. Plant, what did the, the plant is dead. It is it's dead. dead. <laughs> it's dead already. <laughs> it's dead. It's so dead already. It, it lives. Let's in see. Front can of... you twist the camera? Did we mention this on can the podcast? I don't know in? if we mentioned this, but like Zach hit us all up and said, <laughs> "What type? <laughs> what type of plant?" Zach hit us up and said, "What type of plant should I get for my room?" And I, I, uh, I put forward the idea of a, a fake cactus, like a cactus. Yeah, just get just get fake ones. Easy. Don't even have to feed succulents. Them. Yeah. yeah, succulents are well, like on the next look. in line. And then, and then you decided to go with this fucking the fancy, most sensitive. One that's gonna... it, was, it was pretty. It was. It pretty. was. Look, yeah, okay. but that's the point. I, I don't think it's my fault. And here's why. So oh, it's oh the next God. Okay, okay. Yep. Hold here on. we go. Well, right, let me let's, justify let's this, then we'll get into the episode. Yeah. So the top of our house pretty much gets mm. sun yeah. almost mm. the entire Excuse afternoon. One. Yeah. And yeah, it was in front right. of a large double-paned window. And I'm like, okay, yeah. when the yeah. sun comes, I'm going to have to close that window. But mm. for whatever then reason... I put the blind down, but then when I came in, the blind was up. So I'm not going to put point fingers, but I think it was Jack. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And it essentially, like, the night before, it was it yeah. was a strapping, beautiful, structurally sound plant. I came oh, in perfect, that yeah. afternoon. It was fucking, it was wilting more than a, I don't know. You know why, though, is because it got um, cooked. It sweats. It got cooked. 
Yeah, it the gets heat, they sweat. Heat does so to it. you have to make sure well, you either have like a window or a blind Bunnings. open or something like that. They sweat and then they they wilter away and they look all sag and saggy and sloppy well, and died. stuff like that. They so, were. The lady yeah. at Bunnings well, said it like You can move heat. it away I gave it so heat. Yeah, don't. They don't like heat. <laughs> the no, ghost mate. in your house <laughs> fucking killed it is what I would saying. move that plant yeah. and it, yeah. you could still su- it, it's not completely dead he's just wilted away so yeah. you relocate that plant give him some water not too much water and <laughs> what? what is this Burke's backyard <laughs> what is fucking <laughs> podcast <laughs> Jesus <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all right. I'll, yeah, I'll people want to tune plant. in and listen give to him, this. Give him a cup of water every, a day. Every, every week, every <laughs> week, I'll give one. you a plant update. Yeah, I'll Just probably have Yeah, next week one. it's dead, mate. Yeah, get a fake 100%. One. Yeah, okay. I told you what plants to get if you wanted hardy, durable plants, and you did the exact opposite to what <laughs> well, I said. Nikki, I fucked it, all right? I fucked it. And I can admit that. I can admit that. I fucked At it. least you admit right. when you fuck up and you don't listen to me. When you know, what is, what is the number one rule, oh. Zach? Come on. Uh, the the number one rule is don't give dogs cooked chicken bones. All right, well, so what is the topic for today's episode? <laughs> so what are we talking so, about? So today, so today we're going into, into individualization. Um, we're going to split this up over a couple of episodes because it is quite, quite a broad topic. Usually when we think individualization, people straight away program individualization. Let's go there. Let's talk about uh, intensity, volume, frequency, exercise selection, all that good stuff and how we individualize it for a person to get a potentially better result, a better outcome from that program. Um, and that is definitely a conversation we want to have, but I feel like it's, it's, it is a whole episode on its own. So before we get to horse. that, yeah, <laughs> okay, more, <laughs> are we just going full horse now? Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, um, we <laughs> we stepped away from crawdaddy and stepped into horses. Crawdaddy on horse. Um, horse so horse, before horse we get to that, we want to talk about like individualization in general and just like, what is it? And about maybe some of the coaching individualization, uh, and it, how we do things and how we, we get, try and get people the best results. Um, so the kind of topic starts, I guess, or by just saying like, what is individualization in, in your terms, Zach? Cause like, this could be. Uh, this you can't really be wrong. Like, like, what are we? What are we trying to achieve here? Well, as with everything, my description of individualization is individual to me. So, if anyone says I'm wrong, you can get fucked. Yeah. But for me, yeah. I guess it sure. just comes down to individually the, get fucked. <laughs> the the tailoring of an approach to best yeah. suit a specific person. I really tried hard not to use the word individual in the definition of individualization. But that's it. It's <laughs> yeah, just the tailoring, or yeah. I'll caveat that and say the tailoring over time of an approach <laughs> to best yeah. suit the person and create a half decent outcome. That's really yeah, all it is. Decent, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. you don't, as long as it's not shit. <laughs> that's it. That's it. We're just trying to get a result. Like, um, we're trying to get a better and better result. We're trying to get closer to perfect, but whether you ever reach perfect is, is probably like a, something, even if you do, you don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, and I it's, mean, and only, it's always, only Pitbull knows. It's, He's the only <laughs> person who's reached perfection and it's Pitbull. So, so we can ask like, him, what, but... So why why is it important? Like, why why can we... Like, first of all, I agree with that. Like, I, 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 mm. I think where the, the way I view individualization is... Uh, we are, like you said, tailoring our approach where when somebody comes to us, we're going to give them based on the data that they've given us and, and their with prior training history, prior like technique videos they send us, just our general communication with them and, and like the kind of vibe that we're getting through them, how we're going to individualize our communication to them and, and our tone to them uh, and all this business. Like we're going to slowly tailor that over time based on results that we get from a particular approach. So we, I might decide to, like I get the vibe from you that I'm going to speak to you in this particular way and then, or, or cue you in a particular way and then you're going to go like, just not get it, not understand it. Uh, at the moment with you on Instagram, you have your, like your three levels. You kind of kind of pick where the person's at and explain it in the right way. Uh, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't biggest thing is that we take note of that whether it works or doesn't and and move it 
in this in the direction closer to 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 good, and that's kind of what individualization is. So we might mm. start when we're gonna, if Zach's starting coaching with me. The first program probably isn't going to be spot on. There's probably going to be both of the, the variables within the program, which we'll talk about. Um, another one like load and, and volume and all that that are probably going to be a little bit off. But just just the, how I deliver the program and the particular um, little details in there might be a little bit off to start with, and then over time we're going to get closer and closer to it. Now the biggest hardest part about this is that life changes. Like mm-hmm. like shit changes over time. Hopefully you get stronger, like, and that changes things, the effectiveness of certain things potentially. Um, you might pick up injuries. You might just, you getting older and developing as a person might change or you learning is, is it changes how I speak to you, how I communicate to you. Um, like there's, there's so many variables that come into this that, that makes it kind of like this perfect thing, this individualized approach, like a constantly moving target as well. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a constant thing that we're chasing. We're, we're, we're not like, oh, yeah, look, we got the, the perfect setup now. Like, just do this forever because it just it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah. I mean, with, with the kind of, I guess, the two things that you can distill out of that and just pull a little bit further. As you said, you, you can't individualize in the absence of information. If you're trying to individualize without any data or without any in, like, information on the individual, it's just randomization. That's why initially things have to stay pretty similar because if someone's goal is to be a power lifter, there's a decent chance that very similar things are going to work to other power lifters. <laughs> so if you took somebody and you locked them in a room with a barbell, a couple of plates and a, like a bench press and say, I'm mm. going to come back in two years. This magical person doesn't need food or water. You just lock them in a fucking closet like Harry Potter. Mm. And you come back in two years and say, look, I just want you to lift this as much weight as you can. Chances are, if you come back, they're probably going to make the shapes that most powerlifters do. Like they're not, they're not standing on the bench press doing an overhead press. Like that's not going to be how they move the most Maybe. weight. They I saw be. a video could just, be. just to go completely off topic. I saw a video on <laughs> on Instagram this morning of a guy. Uh, he was doing a he was doing a squat, but he was like on like it's. What are they called? Like it's like a skateboard, but the two ends swivel, and like you propel oh, yourself. Oh, ripstick! I fucking yeah, love like, that dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love, was, love that dude. <laughs> and then he was doing heaps of random shit, and I was like, imagine if you came back and they were just doing that. You know? Well, some people are just built different, but the majority of people <laughs> yeah. are going to end up lifting the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, similar. Like yeah. if you gave yeah. him a ripstick, then maybe he's doing like the ripstick deficit. Like possibly yeah. that might be the optimal way to get results, but that's why we all start at a similar <laughs> place and individualize over time. And I guess the second thing that you can distill out from what you said would be the landscape is always changing. I, I'm just going to mm. completely steal a quote from a podcast that we listen to in preparation for this. So this is okay. actually completely my individual property. The way they describe it, it's kind of like a maze in the dark that the walls are moving. Like, Mm. the first day you come in, the maze is at a different landscape, and you can kind of see in front of you a little bit, but you can't really. Then as time changes, the walls and the maze itself change. So, depending on the day, depending on uh, Mike Tashira. Good Mike. So, if you think it's a shit analogy, it's his fault, not mine. But (laughs) the the landscape is always changing. I I think he he delivered it much more eloquently. I just did no justice. But the landscape's changing over time. And the information yep. that you have previously isn't always going to be useful in the given circumstance. Yeah. So, what, like, if if I if I just go the if I just go the complete opposite of what most people would uh, expect if they saw the word like individualized approach. Like, if you if you sign up to an online coach right now and they say, like everyone does, like, oh yeah, the customized training program or whatever, like, what are you expecting from it? Like, what are you like what? Are you expecting like, cause like it's, it's a hard word because like, um, everyone uses it. So well, everyone uses it, really it but it also just means like, like I could say like, uh, I have an individualized customized training plan for you in my advertising. And then when you sign up, you get to choose from like a three day a four day or a five day plan, but they're mm. all exactly the same and, and given out to everybody. Like would, 
would you be okay with that as like your level of customization uh, or like you get to choose from a, like a, a powerlifting block or a, like a bodybuilding block and that's it like you do you do like program it's <laughs> well i mean i think it i think it matters less on the initial decision like we said as much mm. as it matters that but everybody the thinks one, like they have expectations yeah, the, like the first one if the first one looks different to the 10th one then it's probably being individualized. If the first one looks the same and they're not making changes based off how things are going, they may have just somehow Battery. stumbled. They, they may have somehow stumbled on the perfect program for you from the very first thing they wrote. They just slapped Jim Wendler 531 up your ass and you made great progress. Hey, so you works. keep running 531, which is honestly how most people start training. Well, how, the that's a good one. Changes. Like, this- how how individualized did you start? Because I have a, I give a few stories on this. How I started oh, just just bodybuilding dot com workouts. Like yeah, nice. possibly the Fully least individualized. Then. <laughs> yeah, possibly the least individualized and least thought through methods of programming to ever exist. <laughs> and they worked really well because I was sixteen years old, full of testosterone, and mm. apparently had something to prove. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it worked. But then as you get better and better. More individualization is required, not necessarily because individualization is the magical key to success, but True if something good changes, individualization. then there are... Pardon? True good that? individualization, as in like, like based off data and off of results yeah. moving you closer yes. to the result as opposed to... like my, my initial individualization was me just jumping randomly between programs whenever I felt like I needed to, like ego, ego individualization, which is... <laughs> or you run them the all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. do everything like my individualization, at once, then it's completely individual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my individualization was like, I'm going to download this program, but then, well, the deload week, I don't need to deload because I'm tough. So I would just skip that. So I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that sort of stuff. But to, to go the other side and, and go like where uh, individualization might not be as important to play the other side of that. Uh, I remember when I did my bodybuilding stint those couple of those few years whatever it was uh and my coach at the time i i would love to look at how much i run like how long i ran the same programs but i reckon it was like six months of the exact same program i'm not talking i'm not i'm not like nothing different at all it was like you know chest press three sets of 10 next exercise you know like there was no not even a, a yeah. load given or anything we just went as hard as we fucking could <laughs> for those 10 reps and then next week you're trying to do slightly more load and then we would do that for like six months you know and we actually made a lot of progress but it's because like all the phys- the facilitation on the outside like we were eating perfect like i said in previous episodes like it was full all in like absolutely doing everything weighing everything, you know being as, as good as i could in all aspects. So that program actually lasted me a really long time because I was stupidly consistent mm. and had facilitated the best possible recovery and, and progression on the outside. So like um, we didn't need and to worry about yeah, accounting for different stresses and stuff because I was just like super consistent. So like mm. you could say that is a suboptimal approach because it wasn't based on my recovery or, or whatever and, and – uh, you know, my coach wasn't really giving feedback and, and all that business, but like made shit ton of progress on the program because uh, whether he just randomly, the dart hit at a, at a nice recoverable volume uh, and the program was like, okay, but I made tons of progress through majority of my lifts by doing the same thing every fucking week. Um, and so, I yeah. guess that's what it comes down to in the end. Like how much individual, like as a question, how much individualization do you need? So you, there's, there's too much where someone's just randomly changing things and in the Absolutely. sake of, or in the name of that, like, oh, cool, we're going to do this today. But because yeah. you're an individual, we're going to do everything else differently for every second week. And then there's the other corner of, okay, just do this template and carry on until you die. The mm. amount of individualization needed is somewhere between those two. And all you need is yeah. enough. All you need is enough of it so that it kind of matches up to the point to get a result. Arguably, having it match up better is probably going to rear a better result. Like at the end yeah. of the day, if everything lines up really, really well, it's going to make a better outcome than if it kind of doesn't. My, my, favorite, my favorite analogy for this is, you know those little, like... The things you give babies with like the square holes and the square blocks mm. and the circle holes yes. and the circle blocks. Like if you push hard enough, a circle block's going through a fucking square hole. 
<laughs> like, I, I like if, you, if, if, you, if you apply enough effort, you'll either fuck up the hole or you'll fuck yeah, up the block. But eventually it. it'll fit. It's, an, it's enough individualization with enough <laughs> pressure put through it. Arguably, if you put the fucking square one in the square hole, it's going to be yeah. better. But you can get yeah. one in there. And it's how it works. <laughs> yeah, and uh, how do you know it's like going back to like the, the, the perfect thing, like trying to get closer to perfect. Like as long as you're getting, like what, what's enough of a, like a, we, we define a meaningful progression, I guess, on the, on the previous progress talking about um, minimal mm. effective dose to some degree. But like to me, uh, and I tell all my guys this during prep because during prep, everybody inevitably gets to this point of like, where your emotions are high, like you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, you're fatigued. So like, you know, you're just, you're overthinking things and things like that, where like if one week doesn't go to plan or, or whatever, like you freak out about it. Like at that point, I, I try and tell everyone like the, as much as the grass will seem greener on the other side, as much as you want to add sets, add exercises, maybe the other way, take shit away because you're fatigued or whatever. Like um, you can't, like it's, it's probably not, it's probably not better over that side. It's probably not like you, it's not the time to be changing shit, to be, uh, to be mixing mm-hmm. things up. You're better off just letting it run its course because there's a lot of emotions being thrown around at that point. Yeah. It's as long as things are moving forward in some capacity, like I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's capacity for that forward motion is going to be different. You have someone who's yes. just stoked with five kilos and the amount of individualization or the amount of specific work that they need to achieve, that's going to be less than someone who wants 50 kilos. And as long as yeah. the amount that they want somewhat realistic, you can put them somewhere on that continuum. The person who wants to add 50 kilos to an already good total, well, you, you're going to have to pay a fuckload of attention just because a small thing that you notice might be the difference of accumulating another couple of kilos which will push them towards that goal. Whereas if you have the bloke who's just fucking stoked to lift something kind of heavy, there's a lot more leeway that can be built within that. Yeah. So Pursuit. individualization towards goals is is important here is what you're saying as well. Yeah. Like, yes. One thing that we were mentioning before was that uh, your particular current training uh, goal is pr- there's probably we'll not a, a, a templated we'll a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, there's just no. There's probably no templated programs on the internet that you can download specifically for your goal. That you know, like the the individualization of things, both on a, like a programming level, like all the variables, but like on the coaching level, helps us uh, achieve more people's goals. Like if all we did was mm. like, here's our our three programs. You've got, uh, you know powerlifting in three days, four days, five days, take, you know, which one was whatever one's your fancy go for that. Then we wouldn't be able to help people that kind of wanted to do dunks on the side or wanted to do like, you know, stay in shape or, or improve their weird little goals that they have. Like, um, you couldn't, you couldn't vary off the plan very well. You know, you, ha- you that they just wouldn't be an option. You'd have to stick to it and then mm-hmm. be like, yeah, kind of, yeah, just do that on the side, man. You'll be sweet. You know, even though you might not be sweet. So, like, individualization <laughs> of it might um, just helps us accommodate more people and their, their varying goals. Mm-hmm. And not just trying it to jam people. lends itself to flexibility. J- yeah. Jam the circle hole in there. And I guess, like, to go completely to the left, that is where <laughs> human coaches will always beat AI. Fuck you, AI. I know you're listening. You yeah. won't beat us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck you, man. An- but- analyzing our data. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they're going to analyze this podcast, and now they're going to be able to do it, so... True. We're fucked. Yeah. But yeah, look, I, <laughs> that, I, I agree that, that the element of flexibility and as you start adding more and more things to the mixture, it's going to need to be more and more individualized because you're juggling more things, more things provide more metrics, more metrics provide more opportunity to individualize. But I guess it's about making the conscious choice of, okay, what needs to and what doesn't need to. Because there's a, there's a yeah. choice within that. There's certain things that you probably don't have to fuck with or you're being pedantic if you are fucking with. And it comes back to the old more is less conversation with that. Like, if, just because I can change this, do I need to? Because not only is it the fact that, yeah, the result may be inconsequential, but a lot of the times if coaches are just making those choices that don't really matter, it's adding more work for them. 
And again, mm. yeah, people pay good money to be coached, but you also don't want your coach there tossing up and making choices that don't matter, wasting their time. Because then that's less time for them to spend either, you know, having to fucking chat to you and figuring out why your squat's still shit. Because they're too busy stressing about which split squat's going to be best for this person when realistically they're the same thing. Yeah, Some enough. choices just don't... Yeah, cl- close enough. Like, if you look at the large-scale goal of most things, eh, good enough is well enough. And then as someone gets better and better, those choices matter more and more. But there's more important horses to ride. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's talking about like what we looking we're, for a stallion. Look, the the without going into the Horses. program individualization and, and load and volume and all that, because uh, we will uh, cover that with lots of different examples uh, from clients and things and ourselves in future. Like, let's go through the things that we like that aren't those that we are individualization from a coaching perspective. So the first one would be uh, like how the how things are delivered and, and the feedback that we give people. So the feedback, how I speak to one person might not be how I speak to another person. Like some people on my list I have to be super stern with. Like if they fuck up, I'm just like, man, like you can't. You can't Do you be, want to name a name? No, nah, there's plenty. You, you, can't be, you can't be doing this. Like, you know what I mean? Like if they're a serial repeat offender with certain things, I sometimes you just have to be like – you, this is fucking you. Like, let's not do this and just be super blunt with that person. And they they respect mm. that and they like that and that works for them. That that our relationship, our our, our coaching, uh, I've individualized it for that person that they respond to that. Whereas if I use that same approach with somebody who's a little bit more timid and reserved and everything like that, they're going to be like, "Well, you know, how dare you speak to me? Yeah, like yeah. That? Why how why are you coming at me? Like you're freaking me. Like mm. it's you." You know, it's it's too front on for them. Whereas um, I'm going to take a much more just different approach to how I word things. But, but it's like, also the expectations of the client as well, right? Like if they're oh, that's someone saying, that's that like, I different. want to be a world champion and I want this, and then they're doing something that's complete opposite and detrimental to that, then like... Yeah, know. but still, it's... it's Yeah, how I... It's still going to be come down to the, mm. what they... Who I, I coach... Different the way that you speak to Isabella who, versus Keita are very, versus very different. Anthony versus like, all the, the, yeah. they're different people mm. that have very different tones when mm. we speak to them and we talk about different things because they need help in different areas. Yeah, and, you, and I know you have very different ways of speaking to your clients. Uh, oh, mine's like mine's you deal a with fine a, line. You have mine's a different. A you have a lot line. of age difference. So like like you're talking to yeah. sixteen year olds and on the other end, you know, much older than that. So like do you speak to them differently, I imagine? No. Massively. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes I catch myself because anyone who's been coached by me knows just the stupid shit that I say. Same thing with yeah. anyone currently listening to this. You could imagine if you were talking to me on a weekly basis, just the shit <laughs> that I say in terms of what I, how I cue and yeah. how I try and conceptualize things. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say something, and the best example is when I went back to the Central Coast for Christmas. I did a couple of sessions with my dad because he started lifting, and he couldn't, hey, he, couldn't, he couldn't figure out a certain thing. So I was like, ah, oh, it's like sitting on a cock. And he was like, <laughs> sitting on a what? And I was like, ah, wrong cue. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone, there's just there's just, there's just slight there's just slight differences, probably in how crass they're delivered. But no, I agree. It's something that it makes a coach a better coach when you know how to tailor your speech and tailor how you're delivering those interventions for the person. Because you can't just approach everyone the same. There's no way. Because everyone's so individual in how they how they will respond. Even though physiologically, you can argue, yep, a person's a person. But as soon as you go above, like the meat and bits, everyone's so fucking different. Mentally, just completely, yeah. Yeah, it's, even at a comp, like if, if you go and sit down at, a, at, a, at any random powerlifting comp and then watch how people walk out to the platform and that you can see the different mm. personalities, like one person's scared as fuck, like they're super nervous, the other person's sniffing three bottles of ammonia at once and, and charging at the, at the bar head, head first, bar. you know yeah. what I mean? So it's just... One of the things that I always tell everyone that comes back to this um, unique situation of like 
coaching personalization is being able to put yourself in the shoes of the individual, right? Mm-hmm. Like being able to understand Massive. Yeah. to some extent, because obviously like Zach will never understand the complexities of a single mum, but um, like being able to relate and understand what that person is going through and empathize with that or yeah, fuck. as you said, be that more direct mm-hmm. approach if you realize that there's someone that... They have different to- problems. It just comes back, different people, different problems. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not always about like... You know, whether I do three sets of 10 or three sets of eight, like, does that matter? Like, whatever. But it's, these people have different problems that are stopping them from getting the most out of the piece of paper that I'm giving them, you know? Mm. Um, and I'm going to individualize my approach. I'm going to give this, even if it's like this person has less time in the gym than another person, I'm going to, I'm going to set the program up with kind of time saving strategies, whether it's supersetting things, putting in circuits, uh, drop sets, stuff like that that are a little bit more time efficient that give it they give a similar stimulus, a similar outcome. Uh, you know, like stuff like that. So even that could be individualized, mm-hmm. individualized to like how long their sessions are going to take because they have much less free time. Whereas for me, fuck, like Matt can program a session that takes five hours, which is any session for me. <laughs> and um, and I'll, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll find a way to get it done. You know what I mean? So mm. to some extent, <laughs> I'll get most of it done. I, 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 I think I'll, as well. I'll get the majority. <laughs> I pro. I swear. I swear, coach. Um, this this I just thought of this, and this isn't a very well fleshed out idea. So we'll see how it comes out. But mm. with everyone having their individual problems and issues, I feel this is a place where new coaches always get caught up in their trying to resolve a problem as opposed to just work around it. And I think for me as a coach, a line that I'll use a lot is, I'm not your parent. Like if somebody consistently wants to make poor choices, I'm not your dad. I'm not going to rouse on you for you going off program, but understand that there's consequences in your performance. There's things and problems that you may be having that as a coach, we have the skills to work around, but we can't fix them. Like I'm not going to go message your ex-wife because she stole your Xbox. (laughs) <laughs> like no, that's something for you to deal with. But while she's playing your elder, certain things account, you want to help people through stress. and resolve. There's yeah. certain things yes. that we as coaches can resolve, and that's where the invert, like Will was talking about, you know, different stress management strategies and things like that. But yeah, like you said, there are certain things as well yeah. that if they're repeat offenders, then it's like you know what, as you said, I'm not your father, or I'm not your mum, and I'm not going to hold your hand through every stage of yeah. life. And <laughs> you wouldn't instead, say that I'm to just every gonna... single person either. No, uh, but instead, no, as you said, mostly, you can. Yeah. Work around it. Yes, and that's if they're really repeating that job. same behavior, just get how do we follow our plan? Yeah, and if they don't have, if they don't have the wherewithal to fix the situation or resolve the problem, you just tailor the plan around the problem, and that is individualization. Nail yeah, it. You're refining it to to suit them exactly. better. Exactly. Yeah. And then, as that... problems are resolved, the approach changes as well. Because yeah, we talked about. Uh, even even the previous episode on like minimal dose and it the more and the deeper you dive into into programming and into fitness in general, you realise that uh, as we've said multiple times, this there's no there's there's very little chance of having like a perfect plan for a particular person. Uh, they are mm. always going to have to cater and work their life around it to some degree. Different people, different circumstances, some things they can't change, different priorities on it all that different stuff. But it just, the, you, the more the more you do give time in this, especially like as you've coached multiple people in different situations, the more you realize that like a lot of different shit works. And it's more like mm. just avoiding doing really dumb shit as a coach. Like <laughs> that, that really is, is the most important. It's like, hey, like don't yeah. ramp volume ridiculously fast and fuck somebody's knees. Or like don't, give a person that's had a back injury uh, these exercises that are really back strenuous or like you know if a person's really adverse to doing an exercise don't give them stuff that's similar to that like I don't know mm. there's just I find there's stuff that you got to avoid but then like after that it's like yeah you, you really can get a result in many many different ways and it's more tailored to the, to the individual based on what they enjoy and what they're actually going to do and just what works with their life and, and all that different stuff. Like finding the perfect outcome is, is arguable. Like it, mm. it's just hard. It's hard to define that. 
for that as well, you have the opposing side of if you find something that's working really, really well, ride mm-hmm. that donkey till it fucking kicks the bucket because it may not work forever. And if you, you have an approach now. that... Yeah, who kind of donkeys? Gone for a, gone for a donkey. I, I thought, yeah, I didn't want to... I, did, <laughs> I didn't right. want to say the horse died because that would have made me sad, but donkeys are like mm. sub-horses, so it's fine. <laughs> what, um, so a donkey dies, you're okay with that? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're, it's fine. So you have people <laughs> who a certain approach is working well. Yeah. It may not work as well in two years. So fucking make use of it. Double down on that. Double down. Up your chest. Uh, Go all in. So communication, individualizing like feed, feedback and, and even feedback like uh, like one recently that we've talked about is like the idea of like threatening it where, I'm, where it hurts, <laughs> you know, like a little bit. And, and I mean, this is an approach that I, I talked about. Uh, it's, it, does, it sounds worse than it is. But what I, what I mean is that like you sometimes... To kidnap their family <clears throat> if they don't finish their squat session. Yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that. Not it. No, I'll you could, it. I mean, you could probably get a great result from it, but I'd probably follow. It. <laughs> but yeah, we don't want to overstep that line. But no, I'm just saying, like, if a person's cardio or conditioning is really, really lacking to the point where it's holding them back, it's like the lowest thing. For, like, it's it's really impacting their overall progression significantly, and we we have to find a way for this person to to get that done. Um. You can go about it from different angles because obviously there's like uh, like it takes time is is one um, thing that might hold people back from getting it or they they find it boring or it impacts their health or it impacts this like I'll find different ways to kind of approach it to get to to get them to understand that it's important as in like some power is unfortunately don't care about their health or don't think it's like their problem at that time. Like if I say to an 18 year old, don't take, you know, heaps of drugs or whatever, because it'll, it'll impact your health. They might be like, fuck you, man. I'm indestructible. You know what I mean? Whereas as a 50 year old, whatever, where you've got kids and shit, it's like, it's, it's a little bit more of a consideration and you're a bit wiser by that point, but at, you're going to, you're going to threaten the thing that matters until that point. So if I, if I, if I get a kid who's like, doesn't really care about his health at this point, I'm like, Hey man, if you don't do any cardio, really going to impact your heart. Better. Down the line, it's, it's going to matter. They're going to be like, yeah, that, that shit's like, yeah, whatever, man. But um, if I say to them, hey, it's going to impact your performance based on, you know, down this avenue and that avenue and, and all the different ways it actually does it impact performance, they, they might listen to that, you know. So it's like finding the individual uh, thing that's going to matter to them that I can get them to do the thing that matters. Again, just our, our coaching uh, individualization there is just, finding the words or the things that, that are going to get them to do the thing that we want them to do. You know, it's not so much that to put it's urgency behind it more than anything, like how to put urgency behind them what realize may be this a thing's secondary important. goal. Yeah. yeah. And how it all connects in together. Like, Hey, if you take too much trend, your wiener won't work. A lot of kids will lower their trend when they're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's multiple, multiple things we can yeah. threaten here. Um, so are we going to talk about technique a little bit? Because like technique wasn't something I wanted to dive into with the programming stuff, but like we've talked about individualizing technique before uh, uh, to some degree in, in previous episodes, but uh, I, I feel like it's kind of part of this I conversation. Yeah. Right, I had this, but I like, had a big conversation about this was with Brandon the other night, just about okay. how technique is really just dependent on the goal. Like we said before, okay. there's lots yep. of different ways to achieve many different things. If your goal is only to squat 20 kilos, you can squat that fucking 20 kilos at least 7,000 ways. Like it, does, mm. it does not matter. As the load increases and as the parameters of the goals narrow, then there's fewer options and fewer ways to achieve that goal. Like there's only a yeah. handful of ways you can squat 500 kilos. So there's efficiency efficiency becomes way yes. more important as your as the peak as the loads go up, in our case, in powerlifting. With anything. Like, if you want to jump high, yes. if you want to run fast, if you want to, I don't know, kick the fuck out of a football, there's only so many ways that yeah. you can do that at the highest level. And the higher it yeah. gets, the fewer options you have. And that is how you individualize technique. Nailed. Yeah, so uh, in, in a practical sense, like break that mm. down for us. Like, from, from what does that look like when you're coaching somebody? How do you determine that then? 
Are you going to get them to give you your, their goals and where they want to be? And then, like, because the thing is, like, I'm just thinking about this from, like, a kid who wants to start powerlifting. I'm going to come to you and go, mm. oh, I want to squat 100 kilos. You're going to go, cool. Yeah. But, like, that's not the end goal. Like, most people want to keep getting no. stronger after that. You know what I mean? So, like, how are you determining what the, so what the end goal me, is? So, for me, and the way that I view it is saying, cool, this person... The current goal is this. Hopefully you've had a conversation with them that outlines what their future goals may look like, what they're aspiring to do in the sport or the given activity. And yep. you always try to move towards the ideal position to suit their end goal, but not at the cost of them actually ticking off the previous goals. It's not like me saying, cool, you're not going to squat 100 kilos until you can squat 100 like you'll squat 300. It's not really how it works because the time and the development to get to that technical proficiency is huge. Yeah. But there's so many safe ways for that kid to squat 100. So you, just you have to let challenge do technique. It. Like the idea exactly. of challenging technique. Like you have to, you have to fuck up a few times to learn. Like it's, it's how we learn. Yeah. It's, it's like kind of do a squat a little bit wrong. Or like it could even go down the, the avenue of like choosing variations. Like I'm going to kind mm. of choose things that challenge their different patterns that kind of put that make them fuck up so they go oh don't do that you know it, but there has to be different difficulty ways. Yeah, like that's, that's the difficulty. piece that's the piece that shits me to no end if someone says oh your technique's not good enough same thing with the olympic lifting oh your technique's not good enough back to the fucking broomstick it's like no nah, no nah, just let them let them do it they'll figure it out <laughs> if if they keep doing the action you eventually get better at it it's the equivalent like in any other sport where you, if you say if you you suck at kicking a football they're not taking away the football they just make you kick the football more like was, they're not going to say oh you, you're not following through if we go to karate kid was back. mr miyagi right was, was mr miyagi right with the wax on wax off like should he have just said no like jump in situations speed it up you know expose you to, to, to mr actual... miyagi was running a fucking child labor camp <laughs> from what I can see, <laughs> I say it's wrong. He's like, yeah, now you fucking cut me toenails and clean the windows. <laughs> no, trust me, there's a lesson in this. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds awfully Catholic church. <laughs> but yeah, like the, it's, it's something to be said that you give them the exposure to things <clears throat> that will be sub-maximal enough that they can refine their technique. But you don't just always refine and never challenge. It's like yep. making a really good sword, but you never cut anything with it. You don't know if the fucker's going to break or not. Or putting a sick spoiler on your Mitsubishi Lancer and not flooring it down the main street while cops are near you. Like, you've got to <laughs> find out how fucking fast that thing will go. If the yeah. spoiler falls off, then what's the point in having it? So, so, I don't know where I was so going you there. Do... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. I don't think sport. we ever do. Um, I think that's you know, the other... <laughs> this I is think the I answered your question. Challenge, <laughs> challenging ideas within the, in the podcast right here. Um, same same idea. We fuck up. We learn from it. Or, me, or do we? That's the <laughs> nah. Mostly not. Mostly not. Like, but um, but in a training sense, you would you you would you fly close to the sun and go like that was stupid. Don't do that. Yeah. Well, you have to. Who who hasn't? Who hasn't We're done gonna... something really dumb and been like? Ooh. <laughs> I remember my first powerlifting program. Like, this is actually something that I don't think I've talked about, is that, like, when I, so, I, I, the story goes, I got out of, I did bodybuilding, I went, well, this is cool, but, like, being stupidly weak during my prep and leading up to the comp is not that fun for me. Like, I remember I squatted, like, around the 180, 190, 200 mark when I was first coming into the bodybuilding prep, and then I remember a distinct point where I had to, I could no longer like muster the energy. And this, this is not saying this is how bodybuilding should be. This is, it was a bad approach, but I remember I could not muster the energy like to, to, to perform good technique. And so I just started squatting on like the Smith machine. I was doing like a hundred nice. kilos on the Smith machine. And I was like crying myself to, to, Optimal. to sleep because I was like, fuck this. Like, why am I so weak? Did you have the bitch, did but, you have the bitch pad on it? Did you put the... I hope not. I don't remember. But like, I remember <laughs> like being thing. real sad about it because I was like, I liked squatting heavy and I was like, I'm strong. And now I'm no, like I'm doing this suck. bodybuilding prep and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so weak. I will have abs. Um, <laughs> I'm so confused. You traded abs for um, depression. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially that's bodybuilding. But... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Tam, clip it. Clip it, Tam. <laughs> but, it, uh, yeah. Oh, God, I'm going to offend lots of people there. But you can do it better. You can do it better, trust me. And there is a better way. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. My first experience. Buddy. Yeah, so I decided at that point, I was like, I cannot be super weak and lift heavy shit. And that is actually a sport and that's powerlifting. People brought that to my attention. I was like, fuck yeah, that's my thing, right? Uh, and so my first powerlifting, I don't know how I found the guy, but I found a random dude on the internet who I kind of like liked his his approach to training and the shit that he posted, I guess, and kind of resonated with a couple of things I said, which were kind of a little bit left wing. And I was like, I'm going to hire this guy to write me a powerlifting program. And I remember that I got the program. And the program was literally like max out every day. <laughs> Legit. What a sick And lad. so <laughs> I only lasted one block because I was like, this surely just can't be right. No, everybody else is saying different <laughs> shit. But like I'd literally come into the gym, work up to like a fairly heavy, not like a failure single, but like I'd work up to like something heavy on a squat. Hmm. Um, and that was my day. And then I'll do like maybe some leg extensions or something. But like I'll work on something heavy. Then the next week I'll come back and I'll try and do a slightly heavier single, you know. But they were all challenging, Optimal. you know. And, and I probably got results from it because I was coming from a very non specific background and essentially just working on the skill of squatting heavily, the mental and physical side of squatting heavy over and over and over, very and benching and deadlifting over and over and over. Um, and I probably did get a little bit better because of the background and where I was coming from. But if it wouldn't have worked in different in most people's circumstances and stances. Um, and then from there, uh, yeah, but I, I hired other coaches that had more kind of mainstream approaches and we went from there and it worked, it worked a lot better. But that, that at that point was like, it was different and it got me results. So who can argue, I guess. It just highlights that there's many ways to brush a horse. <laughs> like I said, just as long as it's not outrageously dumb, you, yeah, and as as you can justify it, it to some a, degree. Like, as long as you're not doing it with your girlfriend's <laughs> hairbrush, you're fine. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, you so, someone would be so like, mad. <laughs> uh, uh, your girlfriend's <laughs> hairbrush would actually work all right. So, I mean, it would. Yeah, but imagine that's coming inside. Are you brushing the fucking horse with my comb again, you dicker? I thought yeah. you were going to say, like, as long as you're not doing it with a shovel. <laughs> like, I really don't know where the end of this podcast is going. No, it's not going anywhere. It's just I fucking. Reckon, it's just become it's rambling there. at this point. I, yeah. Uh, I said I had a couple of half decent monologues there. I reckon you can some good value. <clears throat> no, I reckon there's I some think. value somewhere hidden in this. I think when we go into the individual program, it'll make a, a it'll make yeah. things a little bit more. So on the podcast and, feedback form, you don't want to receive criticism for this um, particular podcast, no. or you open a criticism on this podcast episode. No, we are never, never open, open to criticism. Absolutely, it is ever. not productive. I want a compliment sandwich, but instead of the criticism middle, I want more compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Just three, three back-to-back compliments, please. <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah, exactly. So to wrap it up, do you want to wrap it up? Because usually the wrapping it up stuff. Well, we share that. We share that. Uh, yeah, I that mean, I can bit, uh, what, just wrap it up in 50 words or less. What's individualization? Yeah, gen- generally, like, why is, what is it? Why is it important? Uh, I forget some of the other stuff that we, we came to. If anyone's still listening. Uh, yeah, I don't Alrighty, know, yeah, I got this. Get, Individualization is the general refinement of an approach dependent on how the individual responds to the approach previously done. And it is important because it moves the needle closer towards what will provide a better result for the individual. Optimal is a dirty word. Optimal. Ideal. 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 Ideal approach. Or like, good. (laughs) <laughs> an approach that's not shit. And within that, yeah. you can individualize yeah. many things, a lot of which can be coaching skills or volume or intensity. Yeah. And horses yeah. are superior to donkeys. Okay. I think. Yeah, we don't... Apparently, one, that's one of the big sick. takeaways, is that we don't... Zach doesn't care about donkeys if they die. I care about he does. Horses are cuter. <laughs> Unless there's a mini donkey. Oh, fuck. i got to think about this. What about a mini horse? That's just donkey. You've got the crazy. opposite of a mini horse in your dog. Yeah, would I would say Zach? I would say Jack is closer to a donkey. Than a horse. <laughs> Jack is definitely a donkey. <laughs> He's an ass, that's for sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, donkeys. I'm sorry, donkeys. Cancel me. All right. Cool. Right. We'll leave it there. Like, what's that? It's some dude, like some furry, dressed up as a donkey. Like, how fucking dare you? 
<laughs> uh, they're not listening okay. to this. All right, let, yeah, let's move on. So, okay. righto, give it a red hot stamp and uh, and we'll leave red it. Red hot. Thank you for listening to Nexus Unloaded. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned on today's podcast, plus information on our coaching, mentoring, and gym services. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at nexusperformance.aus for any updates on what we are currently doing. See you all in the next episode.